Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar today on mobile local website statistics. I'm Chad Hill and I'm joined by our team in Rochester. Yeah, good afternoon, Chad. This is a hot topic. I know mobile's been really gaining steam and I'm up here in Rochester joined by the team. Say good afternoon, everybody. Hey! Uh, excited to hear this stuff, Chad. Awesome. Well, we're trying something a little new. Uh, I'm on the video today, so hopefully this goes well, but uh, we will uh, proceed and be sure, as always, if there's any questions or anything that come up, please ask them in the chat window, and Adam will either try to answer them or um, ask the question to me as we're moving through the presentation. Well, let's jump right in here. We have three things I wanted to cover. I actually added, did kind of a, a last-minute audible on one of these because we saw the that the uh, some some news came out here on local search ranking factors. So I thought we'd cover it as a group. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is cover our ebook that we uh, just released on Friday. Uh, so we want to talk about some of these new statistics that we think will help you when you're talking to your customers get a, to, to explain the importance of mobile search, what customers are looking for in their website, and of course, you know, how they're searching today. That's changing very rapidly um, as the, the mobile revolution continues to move forward. The way people are using mobile devices and desktop search uh, definitely is changing here. But then, like I said, we want to cover the, the Moz 2015 local search ranking factors, and then we want to end up with a couple price updates that uh, we're making. So let's start here with our ebook. Let's bring that up on the screen. Okay, as I said, you know, we, we found that having statistics is really powerful when you're out talking to your prospects. And so we uh, set out here to look for some t statistics that we thought would help, again, reinforce the importance of local search, again, primarily focused on, on smaller local businesses. But some of these statistics you'll find are very, very relevant to what people in general are looking for in mobile websites. This entire presentation is available for download on our website. If you go to um, the resources tab and then there is an ebooks subsection, you'll find that this ebook we're going to be going through is avail avail available for your download. And I strongly encourage you to use this as liberally as you can in all of your pitches. So feel free to grab screenshots of our, of our um, charts here and incorporate them into any pitches that you're doing uh, with your customers. Okay, well, let's start with a little bit with the objective. So again, our objective here was to go out, and there's been a lot of talk of, of the importance of mobile websites. We know that in many markets that mobile now is uh, exceeds the amount of desktop traffic, and it's only growing. Of course, we just went through mobile get-in with uh, Google, and the, basically that they, for the first time ever, came out and said, we are going to uh, announce that a factor will be whether or not your website is mobile-friendly, and we want everyone out there to go out and build mobile-friendly websites. And so, of course, they there were some stats afterwards that showed that they, they did move the needle. Of course, there's still a lot of businesses that don't have mobile-friendly websites. But we wanted to kind of take the next step because, of course, everyone can say, well, yes, I need a, a mobile website. But we thought we'd actually ask people what's important to them in a mobile website. Uh, how often are they finding businesses for the first time uh, when searching using using local search and maps? Uh, on their mobile phone, and then of course, you know, what are some of the turn the turnoffs, or what is some of the information they're looking for with mobile websites? So the first thing here was we just wanted to get a sense of in our audience that we were talking to how many people had smartphones, and you can see here as we'd imagine that 92.6% of our respondents uh, use a smartphone, only 7.3 don't. No big surprises there. Uh, we then asked them basically how often do they use a phone to search for a local business and we gave them a couple examples here of daily, frequently, occasionally, rarely, never and you can see here that if you take those top two boxes, the, the daily and the frequently, that you're, you're up almost at 60, we got about 60% of the, of the traffic of, of people out there, of our respondents are using um, their phone to search for local businesses either frequently or daily. The next thing we ask them, as you can read here, is that uh, when searching for a business on a phone, you know, have you ever discovered a business that you previously didn't know existed? And this gets around to, again, some of maybe the misconceptions of what the purpose of a mobile website is. Is it simply just to have your current customers come find you again, 
or are people using this to actually sit down when they're in any particular location and look for a new business? And we saw that 78% of the people responded saying that they had had, in fact, found a new business um, based on, on searching on their phone for a category. So we're, we'll get to this in a minute, but they gave us some stats on how, what they're actually using when searching, whether it's uh, the Google Maps app or the Apple Maps app, but we'll, we'll talk about that just in a second. This is a pretty big number, though. So just, again, if you're out and, and talking to your clients about the importance of mobile websites or what kind of information you put on your mobile website, you need to be thinking that this isn't just for current customers. It's actually for, for prospects as well. Next question that we asked here was really wanted to get into a little bit about the types of businesses that people are searching for with their mobile phones. And this, again, we'll, we'll read down the list here, but you can see that, and, and you can see that in this case, people could answer more than one category. So you could say, I've searched for a restaurant, retail, health, beauty, fitness. So you had the ability to, to pick multiple categories. But you can see here that about 90% of the respondents have used their mobile phone uh, to search for a restaurant and then it kind of scoots down from there. So 64% um, looking for movies and events, 58% retail, 47%, 0.5% looking for health, beauty, fitness, which we uh, categorize as hair salons, yoga studios, spas, and then on down the line here. It looks like you know the, the, the one that sort of um, is trailing here is, is professional services. So I guess not a lot of people um, pick up their phone while they're walking down the street or wherever they might be and search for a lawyer or accountant that's more of a considered purchase. So when you look at that category, and again, many of us are working with these groups every single day. I, I see some, I know we have a lot of clients in this kind of health, beauty, fitness category. We have a lot of clients in the automotive and medical services and travel. You know, we, uh, it tends to be that most of our resellers aren't focusing a lot on the, on the restaurant space, but we do have a, a, our fair share of those as well. Um, but you know, definitely this middle group here, there's a lot of clients out there and you can see there's a lot of people that are using their mobile phones to actually search for these types of businesses. The next question is we wanted to know kind of what were people, what were some of the frustrating points that people found when using mobile websites? Um, so these are the top three uh, annoyances when, when you view a, mobile, a website on a mobile device. The first one, and you can kind of correlate the, the color here to the category on the right, uh, was that the business hours are are not easily found. Uh, the next one here is is 42% said phone number and address aren't on the first screen I see, and not all information from the desktop website is available. You can just kind of read down that list. Uh, the next one is having to pinch squeeze Zoom to read text. Clickable text at, um, this is 29%, isn't large enough to easily click. 27.5% said not everything fits on my cell phone screen. Um, 25% said the phone number isn't, isn't uh, click to call, and then 19% text isn't large enough to see on the small screen. So again, when you're out, these again, the, the idea here is that you could take these stats, and when you're doing an assessment of a prospect, you can actually have these stats, and you could almost you know, put their mobile website right next to this and say, how many of their, how many of these issues does their website violate? Next one, um, this is the kind of asking the question in a slightly different way, but now we're asking basically what information do you want to see um, on a mobile website? Some of the same answers came back. They want to see business, uh, business hours, phone number, address, driving directions. Um, next one is prices, menus of product services, and then pretty, it drops down pretty quickly from there to photographs, testimonials, videos, links to social media profiles, and information articles and blogs. So it's, a, it's the things you would imagine when people are looking on a mobile device, they're looking to, to get to that location or maybe contact the location or get some real high level information on pricing uh, to make a decision about whether they're actually gonna physically visit that, that location. Okay, um, next one here is, which of the conditions would make you quickly leave a website? And the number one thing that came back is slow to load. And again, this, this happens, we see this all the time where websites are slow, mobile websites are, are slow. I was looking at a, one with a client the other day that every time you wanted to go from page to page, it took an inordinately a long amount of time based on the technology they were using, which proxied out to get a page back, and it just took a lot of time to get information off of that website. So 
the feedback here was that that's a big frustrate big point of frustration. Um, we in our audits of of typical desktop websites include that the page time the load the amount of time it takes to load a page. So this same information would be pretty easy for you guys to to gather on the mobile website as well. Uh, next one is difficult frustra frustrating uh, frustration with site navigation at 66.8%. We had 42.8% of people saying that they didn't like a cluttered layout. So uh, then 39% said phone numbers not immediately obvious. Again, we heard this before, but text hard to read, address directions not immediately obvious, business hours not obvious, website doesn't look good on my phone, and I have to pinch, squeeze, and zoom to retext. So a lot of these things are pretty consistent um, and, and fairly easy to audit. So these, again, are great points for you to be able to take through when, when talking to customers uh, about winning their business. So the next question we wanted, to ask, we wanted to ask is really just about what happens when someone experiences a bad mobile website? Is it a deal killer? Uh, do people give them a benefit of a, of a doubt and go try to find that information somewhere else? So the question here was, what do you do if you're disappointed by a business's mobile website? And essentially 54.8% said they will give the business a benefit of a doubt and go to try to find that information in another source, whether that's Google My Business or Yelp or some other source of local business information. But 54.8% said they would do that. 38.8% um, said they would look for a similar business. They would actually just go find a different business, another pin on the map or some other way of, of locating that information. Uh, and then 6.2% were pretty uh, hardcore here and said that if you don't have a mobile website, we're not going to do business with you. Okay, a couple more questions here that we wanted to review. And again, this entire presentation is available for download uh, right now off of our website. And I strongly encourage you, these all of these uh, charts and graphs, you can pretty easily, we have branding at the bottom, but you can very easily grab these different images we've built and grab the actual answers and the percentages. Feel free to include those in a deck. I think these, again, the idea is that these are stats that are going to help you sell your marketing services. So this is primarily focused on you know, getting in the door, maybe some web development, or getting a mobile website up and running for a client who doesn't have one. But the idea is that once you're there, some of the other stats that we've been reviewing here will also show that um, people are using this as a, a means of, of locating new businesses, so there would be new prospects coming in off of the mobile website. So uh, last one here is, what do you think about a business that has a mobile, uh, second to last one, mobile website that looks good and has all the info you need? So 72% said, hey, it makes a great impression on me. Um, uh, next one down, 61% said, makes me think they really want my business. 54% said, makes me think they care more about their customers. And then it goes from there, makes me want to do business with them, makes me trust them, doesn't really matter to me. So almost no one said it doesn't matter to them. These are the kind of things that I think We've used the analogy that if you walked into a storefront and it was dirty and unkept and not well merchandised, it doesn't, or you walk into a restaurant, again, that's dirty, uh, all the, the dishes haven't been cleaned off the tables, it's going to make you turn around and walk out the door. You're not going to want to be in that, that location. Same thing is true with a mobile website. You want it to be something that is proud and reflects the brand uh, and the people that you want and attracts people to your, to your company. So the last question that we asked here was, what mobile apps do you use when searching for local businesses? And, you know, 57% of our good friends Google Maps here, 57.1% said they're using Google Maps, 47% said they're using Chrome, 32% said they're using Safari, 31% said the Google Search app, 24% said Yelp, 14% Siri, 11% Apple Maps, and 10% percent said Google Now. So by and large, certainly, you know, far and above other, uh, anybody else, Google definitely still has a lock on some of these categories here with really three uh, or four uh, different properties representing how people search for local businesses. Well, that's the 10 questions we asked and some of the answers here that, that we came back to, uh, that came back from the response. So we'd, lo again, love it for you to be able to use these in your presentations to help close more business and Adam are there any questions that came out of the out of uh, reviewing this this uh, ebook here uh, Ted no I think everybody's too busy on their mobile smartphone looking to where they're gonna <laughs> eat dinner um, yeah but uh, there are no questions and I know some of these things seem like they're kind of common sense but I agree with you there's nothing like numbers to put into a proposal 
uh, to help uh, better your chances of winning, sound like an expert, um, support your pitch and further your cause. So this is this is good stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I think the big highlight one for us that we've been uh, really promoting, going back to our takeaway slide at the very beginning, um, we've really been pushing for pushing a lot on the idea that um, that essentially this one right here, 78% of mobile users discovered a business that they previously didn't know existed. So that to us is really the big uh, takeaway here is that you know, the mobile website isn't for your current customers. It really is a way of getting new business. And the fact that over 50% of people are now using mobile devices for doing searches, especially for local searches, um, that it, this is a really powerful place to be. Again, pretty well known already, but I think the key thing here is just to uh, use these stats to help you make the point for any business that may still be slow to take this up. You've got a lot of ammo here to help make the case that they need to do it and they need to do it now because this is only going to continue uh, to grow. I mean, we've been talking about mobile trends for, for years now and uh, they'll, they'll still keep growing. Excellent. Well, let's take a look. I wanted to jump over and take a look at the Moz 2015 local search ranking factors study. I'm just going to increase the size of my screen a little bit. So again, this is pretty much hot off the presses. I think this launched this morning, and I had a chance to spend uh, 30 minutes or so just kind of looking through it, but I thought this initial slide that they had here that David Mim put together was a good, was a good overview, because I know a lot of you have been asking about the changes with the, the map pack, where they went from the seven pack to the snack pack or three pack or whatever you want to call it. And for any of you on the, the call today that aren't aware of that, just kind of going back to August here, Around the middle of August, Google changed their user interface where they went from having three search results, and I guess I could just you know, quickly bring up a, a Google search window here and show everybody what this looks like. But if I were to search for plumber in Arlington, Virginia, which is near where I am, you'll see that uh, Google has changed the user interface. And again, for those of you who already know this, I'm only going to spend a minute on this right now, but it used to be that you would normally see seven businesses here, and it was typically referred to as the map pack. And what's happened is that around the middle of August, Google made a change to the user interface. Two things happened. This map right here used to be over on the right-hand side. So they moved the map down, and then they decreased, well, I guess they increased the size of each of the listings, but they decreased the number of listings. So they went from seven listings to three listings. Now you can click more plumbers and you can still see an extended list there, but as we know, most people are pretty lazy. They're gonna uh, look at this, these results, maybe look at a few of the organic results below it, and then they're gonna make a phone call or click through to start looking at content. So in this context, I mean, this is huge, right? Google has essentially decreased the visibility of over 50% of the businesses that were showing in their results. I mean, that is just, in, in many ways astounding that they made that change where so many businesses lost visibility in the rankings. And again, this was pretty good visibility. This was uh, usually the map pack, uh, the seven pack was showing either in the first result like we see here, or maybe there would have been one or maybe two organic results and then, and then the map pack result. I mean, we saw a lot of businesses in our SERP tracker lose a pretty premium spot um, because they were in the fourth or fifth uh, location and they were then, of course, dropped out of the of the results. Um, so a lot of people have been saying, well, what's next? What are we going to do? What does this mean? How do we get our businesses back into the, the snack pack? And so this is always great because we've used Moz to help us benchmark the, the local search ranking factors over the last couple of years. So I thought it was good for us to take a look at this and just see what's changed, what's the same. Um, their pie here is uh, looks at, and they've color-coded it based on kind of the general area that this belongs in. The yellow tends to be the Google My Business and all the local citations. So these are things that are very much unique to local businesses that have a physical location. And you can see here that getting your, your business correct, like actually um, uh, having the right categories in your Google My Business, the keywords in the business title, proximity, those are all, you know, 14, it's 14.7%. Then you can see here external location signals. This is all the citation uh, stuff, and, and, and this is where, for example, we use Yext. We've picked uh, Yext because you get those immediate citations. Other people have other options for claiming local citations, but that's this next block here, 13.6%. From there on out, this next really kind of 50% of the pie is traditional SEO signals. 
So you see about 20.3% of that is the um, is on-site optimization. And so it's basically presence of the name, address, phone number, it's uh, keywords in the title, domain authority, which you kind of only get domain authority based on linking. So that, that one's a little bit of an on-page sig signal, but it's also related to links. So we're going to talk about links next. Uh, the link signals are then 20%. So this is all about inbound anchor text, linking domain authority, linking domain quality. Um, the next one here is 8.4% is reviews. We see a lot of businesses have a really hard time getting reviews. We have a lot of ideas on how you can make this happen, but it, there isn't a way of just automatically making it happen. There isn't really an, uh, an astroturfing option where you can just simply you know, get someone to write reviews. You have to have a, a, a way to request reviews either by sending out emails or by having something in the local business that that's request reviews. So that's an important part of it. And then this blue stuff is our social signals. So whether it's um, Facebook like and Twitter followers, people argue about this all the time. I usually like to think of these social signals as if you have good social signals, you're more likely you're, you're a brand, your people are talking about you, you're more likely to also have people linking to you. So again, I'm not sure it's always a direct, it's directly correlated with if you can just get likes, you get rankings. I think usually it's businesses that have those signals also have a brand that people are going to link to in directories or blog posts and other things like that. And then the last one is personalization. So this didn't really change a lot. I don't remember off the top of my head what the numbers were, but this, this, these rough ratios look about the same from year to year. There were a couple other interesting points that they that um, he made. So I'm going to scroll down. And I'm just going to quickly uh, paraphrase what's said here. Feel free to, again, Google this, and it's on the Moz website. just went live today. But in terms of um, the local search algorithm, you know, one of the things that, that's, uh, that's interesting is that you can see here that their, Google's rewarding quality on all fronts, from citations to links to reviews. So I think the days of a lot of people have come in and saying, I want to go get 300 citations. So I've always said, well, 300 citations, it sounds a lot like just getting directory links. Like that sounds like, you know, something that was done four or five years ago, because many of these places that you can get business citations are, you know, the websites themselves have very low domain authority. Um, and, you know, I, I can't imagine a really large audience uh, spending time there. So again, what Google, what the results here are saying is that you want to spend your time on the on the locations that have that are higher quality. Uh, don't waste your time on quantity over quality, which I think makes a lot of sense. It's definitely something that we see. Uh, and then the next um, point here is that that basically Google Plus is kind of on its way out. So we know Google has basically is uh, is disbanded the the Google Plus team. They're slowly unplugging different aspects of the integration they've done over the years. One of the things that really frustrated the heck out of people was this idea that Google Places, everyone was good with that. It became Google My Business. Google My Business kind of was linked into Google Plus in a way that was confusing to deal deal with. They've they've severed the ties. So now Google My Business is basically now just the place you go to claim and provide Google with local bif business information about your company. So that's great. That makes sense. It'll probably be easier on everyone. Um, but uh, the, the Google Plus side of it is, is kind of uh, is is out. Um, behavioral signals, I think these have been in, in increasing in importance for a long time. There have been people, Darren Shaw is one of them, that have conducted studies where, for example, their Google is tracking the number of people who get directions to businesses and actually use navigation to get from, from where they are to the business. That's a signal that that business was good enough to actually drive and go to, and Google actually knows that your device ended up at that business. So there's a lot of power in those types of signals. Um, there's, of course, other things like time on site and other factors. So the, I think the real takeaway is that the great thing that all of us have as a, as a group of as HubShout and all of our resellers is that we only really work with real businesses. So the idea of trying to trick Google into thinking that there's a business somewhere, we don't have to worry about that very much because we actually have real businesses. Uh, and I know sometimes we have people who come and they're like, well, look, my, my client's a, a plumber and they, they're, they live 40 miles away from where their service area is, that's still a hard one to solve. But again, I think that's typically is the minority of the clients that we're dealing with. Most are in the areas where they're servicing. Um, I'm gonna skip past this next one. Um, the next point here is that links are, are links the new links. And this is always just funny. I, Adam, you probably can appreciate this. It's like this idea that we're gonna get away from links um, 
it, it just never goes away, right? It's like people are like always thinking that links are out, but links always come back in a stronger way, especially when the real, the, the low hanging fruit, like Google My Business and getting your citations right, once those kind of baseline things are done and now we're many years into local SEO, most businesses have claimed their local listings. And so now we're to the point where those things aren't, everyone has that, that's common. So now the tiebreakers go back to things like links. And, and in this case, it's talking about reviews as well. But, but in this, the main point here is that links are, are increasing. I don't know, Adam, if you have any thoughts on that, but I always find it interesting that we're still, we, we still, Google keeps coming back to, or at least the people looking at these search, uh, search ranking factors keep coming back to, ah, links are now more important than they were last year. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it makes a great headline to write, you know, links are dead, backlinking is dead. You see that in a lot of the SEO publications from time to time, and it, and it gets some attention. But each time the experts get together and do something uh, scientific, uh, and when Moz puts out this stuff or they do a poll of the, the leading SEOs, it, it just, it never dies. It's still there. So I, I agree with you. If links are the new links. Um, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have a well-rounded strategy and be doing all these things, but you, you can't... Uh, to, you know, hope that they're going to go away. They just have not. Right. The next one I think is the one that really is the most. I think the most important for us to all try to. We got to. We have to figure out how we're going to how we're going to work with this. But I think this is the reality. So this idea. The next one here is the pigeons shift. And if everyone remembers, pigeon was a a local ranking algorithm update. Don't talk a lot about it, but it was a pigeon shift to the user as the centroid has stuck. So what does that mean? That's kind of confusing. Um, well, what it means is that if you go back to the search I made over here and you look at where Google thinks I am, um, they've gotten, first of all, if, well, let's, let's first take a mobile device. Um, when you have a mobile device, obviously Google knows exactly where you are because they've placed you on a map and now you're searching for something um, based on where you are. So the idea that, that Arlington, Virginia, um, that there is a centroid uh, of where what Arlington, Virginia means to Google, that has changed. Now Arlington, Virginia really is, is an input, but it also is based on where I'm actually searching from. Or if, on, if I'm on a mobile device, certainly if I just sit down and search plumber, it's going to use where I'm located. So what that means is that, the, is that things like SERP trackers are a little bit harder because this search result may change based on where I am, especially for things like restaurants and super hyper-local businesses. So plumber may not be the best example here, but you know a massage parlor or some other thing that um, other local or a gym or something might, it's even more relevant to where your, your location is. So what they're talking about here is that these search results are much more dynamic. So you're not in this, snap pack, this snack pack, but if, uh, if I happen to be searching for a plumber and it knows that the office for the plumber was, there's, you know, at my house, I'm searching for a plumber on my mobile phone and there are many plumbers in Arlington, Virginia, it's going to probably rank order them based on where I am and where I'm searching from. So it's where your business is and where the person's searching from. So it makes it harder for some of these SERPs to always be exactly right because we're taking these proxy or these general searches based on, a, on an input here, a static input, but the reality is that this has become much more dynamic. So this is something that we're all going to have to, you know, uh, to figure out um, how to explain to our clients. And, and it depends on the business because, again, things like plumbers maybe aren't quite as geosensitive. But certainly if you have a physical location, it's going to be even more uh, critical. So that's a big, I think, a big takeaway that, that uh, we're going to all be kind of, kind of trying to figure out exactly how this works. And I'm just going to read a couple of these, um, this last uh, point here. So basically it says, on the other hand, proximity of the searcher moved up four spots in the pack-specific rankings and 10 spots in competitive markets. Clearly, the location of a business matters immensely, but only relative to where people are physically conducting their searches. So I think really this is the thing that we have to start to, we've got to be able to explain clearly to our clients because that is um, super important. And we've had some clients who have decided that, you know, I'm going to, I'm actually going to have my client move to the centroid. I'm going to have them open a satellite office where Google says the centroid of their, of a particular um, search is because uh, Google heavily weights the centroid. And I think what this survey is saying this year is that maybe some of that, that old way Google is doing it, where they assigned a, a lat launch to Arlington, Virginia, um, and, and people even uh, uh, guessed that they assigned a different lat launch to 
you know, plumber Arlington, Virginia than they did, or, or maybe better yet, lawyer Arlington, Virginia, because that centroid might be downtown, whereas something like um, Thai restaurant Arlington, Virginia may have a different centroid because maybe there's a pocket of, of restaurants in a certain area, and that's where people tend to, most of the restaurants are located. So, you know, again, that's kind of moved away, from, move, we're moving away from that and into this uh, world where now it's much more based on immediate, immediately where that person's searching and then where your business is relative to that person searching. So pretty interesting um, stat. Any questions, Adam, that came up as we went through this? Uh, no, we're all clear on the chat window. Awesome. Okay, um, the last thing that I wanted to cover today is just a couple pricing updates that uh, we're going to be rolling out here. I'm going to bring this back up. Uh, two pricing updates. So we have a plan that is actually not on our website, but it's in our pricing doc and it's in our online um, system that we called SEO Junior News. And uh, that price will now be $199 and that includes the premium writer. So that is an update that we'll be rolling out here um, shortly. And then the other change that uh, we're making is that our 2005 local plan will no longer include a level one video. You will be able to buy a level two video or level three video um, a la carte through our web dev purchasing process where you can go to find the requirements and then our, uh, our team, our graphic design team, video team will go create a video level two or level three video for you. So we're gonna be making those two changes. I uh, just wanted to give everyone a heads up. And I think those are our main points. Great, well again, if uh, you have any questions, we'll be posting this on our website, the, the video from today. The ebook is already there. Uh, feel free to ask any questions about any of these topics in our forum or give us a call and we'll talk to you directly. Thanks again and have a great day. Thanks everybody, have a good one.